To celebrate Nelson Mandela Day, the Eastern Cape branch of the Literacy Association of South Africa has put together 67 minutes of stories. These stories are in Xhosa, Afrikaans and English, and there are 23 stories in total. We would like to thank all our readers for contributing to this initiative. Sit back, relax, and enjoy listening to this array of stories. Goedemiddag jylle, my naam is Asje Strijdom en ek is van Latase in die Oostkap. Ek gaan vandag vir jylle twee verskillende stories lees, een in Engels en een in Afrikaans. En ek gaan eerst in my Afrikaanse jylle vir jylle lees. Ek het een lekker story, so, vooral vir mamas of papas met dochterkies of sienkies wat geboelie was al by die school. En my story sy naam is Pieter Kokkerwieter en die hart op sy mou. En dit is een story wat ek vir my sienkie gelees het, toe hy geboelie was by die school. Ja, en dinge was toe uitgesoort daarna, so hoop vir dat ek die boek iets daarmee te doen. Pieter Kokkerwieter en die hart op sy mou. Evers, in een gewone huis, op een gewone dorp, het daar een gewone klein sienkie, saam met sy gewone papa en mama geblij. Hy het gewone maaikies gehad en na een gewone school gegaan, maar sy ongewone naam was Pieter Kokkerwieter. Hy het gewone spielekies gespeel en na gewone liekies geluister. Hy het met een gewone bril gelees en gewone wense gewens. Maar vir nog een rede, behalwe is sy vreemde naam, was Pieter Kokkerwieter baie ongewoon. Wil jy raai vir dit kan wees? Hy het met sy hart op sy mou geloop. Jy sal dalk dink, dis gevaarlik of somme net verspot om met so'n belangrike ding so oop en bloot te loop. Maar vir Pieter Kokkerwieter was dit glad nie vreemd nie. Van dat hy kon onthou, het sy hart gesomp en gelukkig op sy mou geklop. Jou hart gaan seer kry, het sy ma bekommerd gewaarskie. Sy sê nou, dit kry a stamp, of erge, sê nou net hy breek. Ja, daar onveilig in jou boors, waar hy hoort, het sy pa in a diep stem gebrom. Maar Pieter Kokkerwieter het daarvan gehou dat sy hart weis hoe hy voel. Hy het braaf sy breeg glimlak achter sy oore ingehaak en sy hart het daar en sy hart net daar geloos stevig op sy mou. Amal het altyd geweet hoe hy voel omdat sy hart so gemakkelijk aan sy buiten kan sit. Jy kon dadelijk sien of hy hartseer of kwaad is. Maaikies het nie nodig gehad om te wonne of hy lis is verspeel of dalk net alleen wil wees nie. Sy hart het het gewys, groot en duidelik, daar op sy mou. Maar een dag, een dag, het die vreselikse ding gebeur. op die speelterrein. Toe sy jyfrou nie kyk nie, hy boel die shamoenie en sy travante vir Pieter Kokkerwiete tromp opgeloop. Boel die shamoenie is a lang sien wat soos a toer en boer Pieter staan. Hy het sy lang dun skade weer stadig oor Pieter Kokkerwiete sy skis gesig geskyf. Sies toch! Het jy hierdie ding nodig om beerte te kan sien, my kind? Het Pieter Kokkerwiete sy gesig gevra. Hy het met sy knobberige wijsvinger op die raam van Pieter sy bril gedruk. Pieter sy oor het amper groote as die bril raam gerek. Nog nooit het iemand so met hom gespot die. Hy het altyd gedink die bril wat hom slim lyk al sy maats het om dan so gesê. Pieter Kokkerwiete het sien en behaagdig sy bril op sy nees recht geskyf, 
Um, um, hy het woorde gesoek om te sê, maar hy kon hulle nie kry nie. Toe begin al die seens lach. <laughs> Eerst die een en toe die ander, harde en harde het hulle gelag en hulle maag is vastgehou. <laughs> Selfs toe hulle al aan die ander kant van die sportveld is, kon Pieter hulle nog oorlag. Toe allemaal uiteindelik weg is en Pieter alleen bly staan, sien hy, sy hart le op die grond en twee stikke gebreek. Daar die aan toe die sterre helde dier die kamervense skyn, het Pieter Kokkerwiete een baie groot besluit geneem. Hy die twee stikke van sy hart versichtig opgetel en so sy papa gesê het, diep binnen in sy boos gebere. Toe hy later met sy kop op sy kussing le, kon hy die dove doef doef van sy hart net net oor. En die hartse plekkie op sy mou was leeg. Sy maaikies kon nie meer sy hart sien nie, om, da, om te weet hoe hy voel nie. Vandaar die dag af het Pieter Kokorwiete sy gezicht altyd die selfde gelijk. Amper soos een marske. Of hy nou hartsie of kwaad was, opgewonde was, sy gezicht het precies die selfde gelijk. Toe op die dag tydens een gewone pauze by sy gewone school, Sien Pieter iets baie ongewoon. Boelie Shemulie het gebuk om een sokkerbel op te tal. Toe Pieter een rooi hart onder sy broekspijp gesien uitsteek. Boelie Shemulie sy hart was halfpad in sy skoen. Jou hart het in jou skoen afgesak, fluister Pieter Kokkerwiete vir hom, so dat die ander maats nie oor hee. Boelie Shemulie het bloedrooi gebloos. Dis iets wat Pieter nog nooit gesien het he. Toe die ander kind is ver aan die ander kant van die veld met die sokkerbel speel, het Boelie vir Pieter sy groot geheim vertel. Ek het nie die moed om vir mense te sê nie. Ek is eindelijk ongelukkig nie. Dan sak my hart af tot in my skoen. Ek het altyd so gewens, ek kan my hart op my mou dra soos jy maar ek is te skaam. Daarom steek ek om maar in my skoen weg. Daar die aand toe allemaal in die huis al slaap, het Pieter Kokkerwitter nog aan Boelie Shemulie sy woorde gedink. Hy kry vir ou Boelie jammer, dat en Boelie, as hy so boor allemaal toering, sal hy nie so, skaam, so nie die skaam hart in sy skoene raak sê nie. Nee wat dan Pieter, Wie wil nou met sy hart in sy skoen loop? Dan loop ek liever met my na trots op my mou. En vir die eerste keer in weke het een groot glimlach oor Pieter sy gezicht verspry. So groot dat hy dit weer achter in sy oor en mis inhak. Hy het finaal besluit. Hy wil nooit ooit wees kan wees om te wees hoe hy voel nie. Wie weet, Dalk een dag, as jy gaan keier op een gewone dorp, met een gewone huise, waar gewone maats buiten speel, sal jy vir Pieter Kokkerwiete tussen die kinde sien, die klein sienkie met die groot pril en die rooi hart op sy mou. Malam di ngunong ngaba, kodo abanyi bambiza pumla, bagamile ifana, biza unifunde la intzomi em nandi kakulo, wati kekalunga ntzomi, Kudala dala indula mti ya ine ndamu mfuchane, ne milenze emifuchane, jenge impala ukanyi ikwa khashe. Ngomnya unyaka, kwa kukwa imbali la enkulu, kwa kungeko mvula, kungeko nena yukuba izluanya na ziche. Zonke izluanya na zazilamba kakulu. Indula mti ye mapanzu kumti omte, ya zeyati, om dilambile. Jonga ama kabi amanzi ama shik angaka kodwa apezulu andina kufikelela. Indula mti ye ma ikasha elite ichonge pezulu emtini ya zayapinda yati. Diyazu kubandi ngenza ntoni. 
tingaya kubona inkunkela enobuqu engakwazi ukundinceda indlula mthi yahamba ubusuku bonke nesiqingatha sosuku olulandelayo ekugqibeleni yafika kumzi wenkunkela yobuqu yachaza ingxaki yayo ndilambile kakhulu yatsho indlula mthi akukho nto ndingayitsha ngaphandle nje kwamagqabi aluhlaza aphezulu asemthini kodwa andikwazi ukufikelela phezulu emthini kuba ndimfutshane yathi inkunkela enobuqu hayi akukho ngxaki lizakwenzela isiselo sobuqu sizakwenza ukuba intamo yakho kunye nemilenze yakho zibende uzokukwazi ukufika engxoxweni yemithi lula Inkunkela yobuqu yabeka ikomitiyane encinane eluhlaza phezu kwetafile yagalela amacebe amabini omgubo omthubi emanzini kwavakala isandi emanzini aze ajika amanzi abamfusa indlula mthi yawasela onke lo manzi amfusa emva komzuzwana yeva imilenze yayo nentamo zinhlonhlozela Yajo ngaphansi umhlaba yaze yabona ukuba umhlaba ukude yavala amehlo yaze yathi xa iwavula yabona ukuba umhlaba ukude kakhulu kunayo yajo nga imilenze yayo emide kunye nentamo yayo ende kakhulu yancuma yajo ngaphezulu kumthi onamagqabi aluhlaza anencasa yaya emthini yaze yolula intamo yayo yakwazi ukufikelela lula phezulu emthini phela phela ngansomi Mr. Weasley in the lead, they all hurried into the wood, following the lantern-lit trail. They could hear the sounds of thousands of people moving around them, shouts and laughter, snatches of singing. The atmosphere was feverish, excitement was highly infectious. Harry couldn't stop grinning. They walked through the wood for 20 minutes talking and joking loudly until at last they emerged on the other side and found themselves in the shadow of a gigantic stadium though Harry could only see only a fraction of the immense gold wall surrounding the pitch he could tell that 10 ca- cathedrals would fit comfortably inside it Seats a hundred thousand," said Mr. Weasley, spotting the awestruck look on Harry's face. Ministry task force of five hundred have been working on it all year. Muggle repelling charms on every inch of it. Every time Muggles have got anywhere near here all year, they've suddenly remembered urgent appointments. and had to dash away again bless them he added fondly leading the way towards the nearest entrance which was already surrounded by a swarm of shouting witches and wizards prime seat said the ministry which at the entrance when she checked the ticket top box straight up stairs Arthur and as high as you can go The stairs into the stadium were carpeted in rich purple. They clambered upwards with the rest of the cl- crowd, which slowly filtered away through doors into the stands to the left and right. Mr. Weasley's party kept climbing, and at last they reached the top of the staircase and found themselves in a small box. set at the highest point of the stadium and seated exactly halfway between the golden ghost goalposts 
About 20 people and girl chairs stood in two rows here. And Harry, filing into the front seats with the Weasleys, looked down upon a scheme the like of which he could have never imagined. A hundred thousand witches and wizards were taking their places in the seats which rose in levels around the long oval pitch. Everything was suffused with a mistress golden light that seemed to come from the stadium itself. The pitch looked smooth as velvet from the lofty position. At either end of the pitch stood three goal hoops, 50 feet high, right opposite them. Almost at Harry's eye level, which was a gigantic blackboard. Golden writing kept dashing across it as though an invisible giant's hand was scrawling upon it, then wiping it off again. Watching it, Harry saw that it was flashing advertisements across the pitch. The blue bottle, a broom for all the family, safe, reliable, and with inbuilt anti burglar buzzer. Mrs. Scowers, all purpose magical mess removers. No pain, no stain. Glad rags, wizard we. London Paris held here magic. Author Mbali Gama. Sintle loved skipping in the playground with her friends Cindy and Zongi. Just one thing worried her. When a friend skipped, their hair flew up and down and flicked from side to side. Sintle had a thick mop of soft, soft hair that formed a big round shape, and it never moved in the same way as theirs did. One Saturday morning, Sintle asked her mother, Mama, why doesn't my hair grow down like my friend's hair? Their hair flies about when they skip. It looks so pretty. It makes me sad that my hair doesn't move like that. It just stays still. Your hair may be different from your friend's hair, but it's just as beautiful as theirs, said Mama. Sintle made a sad face, but her mama just smiled at her. Look around you, Sintle, she said. Your hair grows from the roots up, like the trees and plants. It's also round and big, just like the earth we live on. You can play around with it too and make beautiful patterns and shapes in it. Your hair is magical and that is special. These words made Sintle happy. She ran outside to tell her friends about her magical hair. But when she told Songi and Cindy what Mama had said, they just looked at each other and burst out laughing. How can hair be magic? asked Zongi. (laughs) Laughed Cindy. Don't joke like that, Sintle. Magic? <laughs> Never. Sintle, eyes filled with tears, but she didn't cry. She didn't want Songi and Cindy to laugh at her again. Just then, the girl saw Gogo waving to them. She was standing in a doorway nearby. Look, Gogo's calling us, said Sintle. The three children loved helping Gogo. She told them lots of stories and gave them dried fruit every time they visited her. So Zintle, Zongi and Cindy hurried to find out why Gogo was calling them. Oh, I'm not well today, said Gogo. I want to send you to Quantole to get some medicine. The children were sad to hear that Gogo wasn't feeling well and agreed to go and get her some medicine. I'll draw you a map so you don't get lost, said Gogo. The map will lead you to Babantoli's place and he'll give you some herbs. Then Gogo went inside to find paper and a pencil to draw the map. She looked in her drawer but she couldn't find any paper. I'll have to make another plan, she said. She looked carefully at each of the girls. Then she said, Zintle, you have very beautiful hair. It looks strong. I will braid cornrows to make a map in your hair. The map will help you get to Quantoli. 
Gogo sat on her favorite tree chair and Zinchle sat in the mat in front of her. Gogo braided Zinchle's hair. The other girls watched eagerly. As Gogo combed and braided different patterns, Zongi and Cindy were amazed by the length of Zinchle's hair. Wow, your mama is right, said Cindy. Your re hair really is magical. It looks so short, but it's longer than you think. It's true, said Zongi. It's a big surprise. Zinchle smiled at them happily. When Gogo had finished braiding Zinchle's hair, the cornrows looked just like a map to guide the children to Kwan Tuli. As they walked along the narrow paths through the felt, Zongi and Cindy often stopped and studied Zinchle's hair to make sure that they were still going in the right direction. When they walked, they sang a song they had made up. Gogo's not well, Gogo's not well, we're going to Guantuli. We're going to fetch herbs, herbs to make Gogo well. The children finally arrived at Guantuli. There, Babantuli gave them two packets of herbs for Gogo. On their way home, the girls again used Zintli's cornrow map to guide them. When they arrived safely at Gogo's house, they gave her the medicine. The next morning, Zintli and Zongi and Cindy went to Gogo's house to see if it was better. When they arrived, they found her watering her garden. Good morning, my children, said Gogo with a big smile. I'm feeling much stronger today, all thanks to you. The girls were happy to hear that they had helped Gogo, but they were thinking about something else too. Gogo, would you please braid my hair the same way you did Zintle's hair? asked Cindy. Mine too, please, said Zongi. <laughs> of course, said Gogo. Come inside. During news time at school the next morning, the three friends told their class about their magical hairstyles. At break, they had just started skipping when some children asked to see their cornrows that made a map to Quantuli. <gasps> It really is magic, said someone, and everyone else Gambugwana. agreed. Indlu Gambugwana. Umbugwana wa ikangela indlu. Le ikangele kangati indlu endle. Ungesa kulala kunye nam, wacho unjanana. Engosi, wacho umbugwana. Ngobo busugu, umbugwana wa yipupa kukunya kunywa. Abantu bezi puka puka eludakein. Ungesa kulala kunye nam. Wacho usikwenene. Engosi. Wacho umbugwana. Ngobo busuku. Umbugwana wa pupa kungolwa. Kuko ubu nchongo nchongo. Ungesa kulala kunye nam. Wacho unlanzi. Engosi. Wacho umbugwana. Ngobo busuku, umbukwana wa pupa kubanda kwa ye kumanzi. Umbukwana wa yefuna inda wa efutu meleyo neyo mileyo. Umbukwana wa fumana ishelufa ezele zi ngwati kufuchane apo. Ngobo busuku, umbukwana wa pupa kufutu mele kwa ye kumnandi. Busuku benzolo, umbukwana. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Handa, it's a phrase. Dear Eileen Brunet. Handa, back seven years like a frat and a root grass monkey. For our friend, for our Mikey, a kill. Say, Hansu Frasius, Dangana. There wills in a kill, the door be to stop. Ik wonder, van wat er vraag gaan sy die meeste hou. Sal sy die sachte, sal sy van die sachte geel pisang hou? Of die soet gierig koeiaal? Sal sy van die ronde sap gelimoen hou? Of Die rijp rooi mengel. Misschien 
Hou sy van die pijnappel met die skerp gepinte blaarkies. Die roomerige groen avocado peer. Of die smakelike pers krenetilla. Water vrug sa Akia die meeste van hom. Hallo Akio, sê Hande. Ek het vir jou a groot verrassing gebring. Narkies, roep Akio uit. My geliefkoosde vrug. Narkies, sê Hande verpaas. Dit is so waar a verrassing. Umpungutje kringa wenza ama kringa. Umpungutje kringa wenza ama kringa. Umpungutje kringa waye impungutje na ma kringa. Waye tengisa iva dala ezinkulu ezincha. Kutengiswa iva dala sondela. Ekabiso lako li pezo luka kolu. Wacho umvunda avunda. Ubiza kakulu kita. Wacho umvula njula mti. Umbungu je kringa waba nuluvu ulu gele gele. Wa isika wa ikageza pagati wa dala ingulu. Wa kupula isikamo esinga pagati wa sinimbiliza. Emba koko waliza lisanga manzi kogope. Wa tata inaliti na msondo wa watunge la kunye ama kageza eva dala. Wa zitengi sa nge kabiso elipanzi eva dala zake. Izi luanya na ezi ninzi, zazi tenga kumpungu je kringa. Leva tala ina manzi kupela pagati, wakalaza unga uchingi. Galoku ufumene indo isha uleleyo, wacho mpungu je kringa. Kufuneka simfundi se isifundo mpungu je kringa, wacho unhu nguvu. Izi luanya na zati bana zeza neta emu. Ndi netebo, wacho umesho makulu sikova. Za tata iva dala enge nando, za shosa umpungu je kringa kuyo, za ze za jala ipola ekajwa yonga ayo. Umpungu je kringa, wabanesi yezi, wafunda isi fundo, futi zange apinde enze ama kringa kwa kona. Twin Adventures, The Twins Climb a Kamerasaurus by Cressida Cowell. Long, long ago, the sun shone down on the wild, wonderful world, and the volcanic swamps bubbled and steamed. The treetop family, the first ever to invent a time machine, have traveled back to the land of the dinosaurs. In this adventure, the time machine has gone back 150 million years to the late Jurassic period, and the twins are in what is now known as the USA. It was a sizzling day, and the sun was shining brightly on the dry, dusty plains. Professor Penelope Treetop was in the middle of an exciting experiment, so she was staying in the treehouse, while Professor Pablo Treetop took the big twins, Alfie and Asha, and the little twins, Tulip and Ted, on an early morning expedition. They cycled happily for an hour or so until they found a large herd of dinosaurs lying fast asleep. I think these are Chimerosaurus dinosaurs, said Asha, looking at her book. They got off their bikes and the twins stood next to the Chimerosaurus and Professor Pablo took photographs with his camera. How interesting, said Asha. These Chimerosaurus have five toes on each foot and square heads, and they're huge. Should we be getting this close, said Ted? Don't worry, said Professor Pablo. Chimerosaurus are plant eaters, and these ones are asleep. However, as the professor spoke, the Chimerosaurus woke up slowly getting to their feet, stretching out their necks and shaking themselves a little and beginning to move away. 
Get back on your bikes, everyone, said Professor Pablo. We don't want any of these dinosaurs to accidentally tread on us. But before they could get back on their bikes, Tulip noticed a baby Camerasaurus who was still sleeping, and the herd was moving on without him. Oh dear, said Tulip, I'm worried about this little baby Camerasaurus, and it's going to be left behind. Whatever should they do? Alfie had a great idea. Ted, why don't you climb on the back of the baby Camerasaurus and give it a tickle behind its neck? And we'll shout in its ear at the same time. So Ted climbed on the baby Camerasaurus and tickled it behind its neck. And the big twins and Tulip and Professor Pablo stood by its head and shouted, Wake up, baby Camerasaurus. Slowly, the baby Camerasaurus opened its eyes and got to its feet and began to move after the rest of the herd. Hooray, shouted Alfie. And then, uh-oh, said Professor Pablo. Ted, I think you need to get off. But Ted couldn't jump off while the Camerasaurus was moving. So the Camerasaurus wandered after the rest of the herd with Ted on its back. Oh dear, said Professor Pablo as they jumped on their bikes. Mommy isn't going to be pleased. If we lose Ted, we better follow them. The herd of Camerasaurus walked slowly over the plains towards the distant mountains, making a loud noise for as they ate, they walked, they ate. The bikes followed them slowly. How interesting, said Professor Pablo. I think they're heading for the mountains. It looks like these Comerosaurus migrate in the dry season to find food and water, just like modern plant eaters. Just before the herd reached the mountains, Professor Pablo cycled in front of the baby Comerosaurus and stopped the bike. So the baby Camerasaurus had to stop too. And when it stopped, Ted slid quickly down one of its back legs and they all rode home. I rode on the back of a Camerasaurus, said Ted, very overly excited. And got some great photos of Ted on the back of the Camerasaurus, said Asha. Maybe don't mention or show the photographs to mommy until she's finished with her experiment, said Professor Pablo, nervously, as they stopped in front of the treehouse. We were quite right to rescue the baby Camerasaurus, but we don't want to worry mommy when she's busy. Have you all have a, had a good day, said Professor Pablo. Wonderful, thank you, said Professor, Professor Penelope. What have you found out about the dinosaurs today? We met some Camerasaurus, and they were three times as tall as Daddy, said Asha. They make a lot of noise when they're eating, said Alfie, and they migrate in the dry season, just like modern-day herbivores, such as wildebeest and caribou, said Professor Pablo. You have found out a lot. What about you, Ted, asked Professor Penelope. You can't jump off them when they're moving, said Ted. Professor Penelope was a little surprised. <laughs> At night time, long ago, in the time of the dinosaurs, the sky was sprinkled with stars. The hot plains were beginning to cool down in the dark night. All the treetop family were fast asleep, while nearly all... Tulip was gently shouting in Ted's ear and tickled his back. But Ted was too tired after his ride on the Camerasaurus. He didn't wake up. It's lucky that you're not a baby Camerasaurus, Ted, or you could be left behind, said Tulip. And she also fell asleep. Too. This book is called Croc Gets a Shock by Myrie McKinnon and Fred Blunt. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey, wake up, Croc. You've overslept. It's ten o'clock. Oh, no. Has my alarm clock stopped? I'm late. I'm late and there's so much to do. I need new shoes and a new bag, too. I'm due at the zoo at twenty to two. Croc gulps her breakfast, grabs her stuff. She runs, but she's not quite quick enough. I've missed the bus. She's out of puff. 
Now clocks in town. It can't be true. The shoe store door says closed till two. <laughs> she sighs. These boots will have to do. It's party time. The zoo looks fine. The lions and the rhinos wait in line. The hippos hold a birthday sign. But where is Croc? We'll have to wait. She's always late. At last. Come on, let's celebrate. Croc swallows quickly. What's up, Croc? I have the hiccups. I can't stop. Poor Croc. Unwrap your presents, Croc. Croc picks a box and gets a shock. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! <gasps> My gosh, I almost dropped the box. You've never seen a cuckoo clock? Hey, Croc, guess what? Your hiccups have stopped. It was the shock. So tell us, do you like it, Croc? I do, I do. I like it a lot. It's a tip-top, tick-top, cuckoo clock. Teddy verloor sy haare. Pam het a baie speciale teddybeer. Sy noem om Teddy en sy hou daarvan om om na by haar te hou. Sy hou ook daarvan om hom saam met haar bed toe te neem, omdat hy sag en snoesig is. Pamse boetie, Johan, speel ook met Teddy. Pam hou nie recht af daarvan nie, en sy waarskie om dikwels om Teddy mooi op te pas. Een dag, toe Pam na school by die huis kom, sien sy dat Teddy sy hare gesnui kort is. Hy het ook gesnui op sy kop en op sy maag. Sy staan met Teddy in haar hande. Haar oog groot van skok. Dan begin trane van woede by haar wange afrol. Haar baba boetie het Teddy sy hare gesnui. Johan het haar beerkie heel te maak bederf. Kijk hoe mooi het ek vir Teddy gemaakt. Pam is baie, baie kwaad. Haar beerkie lyk so hard seer. Hy is heel te maak bederf. Hy, hoe kan um, sy hom vanavond saam met haar bed toe neem, wanneer hy lyk asof hy beseer is? Woedend gaan sy Johan soek om vir hom te sê wat sy van hom dink. Hoekom het jy my Teddy so verneel? Het is nie recht nie. Pam en Johanse ma hoor toe wat met Teddy gebeur het, maar sy los die probleem op gauw. Sy sit vir hom een rooie hoed op en trek vir hom een blauw baaikie aan. Nou kan niemand meer die snuie en aan, aan sy lijf sien nie. Kijk Pam, Teddy lyk sê. Amalungi salalo amakulu en bovane en nane. Amalungi salalo amakulu en bovane en nane. In bovane en nane ya hy kutanda kakulu kufunda. In bovane en nane ya hy lango kunyenjwa nga lendo. In bovane azifundi umteto wazo. In bovane kufune gazjile. In bovane zikokala ukutya ezu kutyayo. In bovane en nane inga funda usukulongi. Inga funda ifunde de kupele usuku. Ezu nye in bovane Zitata oko zikufuma nayo ukugcinela ubusika ngaphansi komhlaba umama kunye notata wayo bacaphuka kakhulu yaze imbovane encinane yaze va idakumbile ngokwenyani ekwindla xa amagqabi ewela phansi imbovane kufuneka ziyo kufihla ukutya phansi komhlaba ikumkani kazi Ifuna ukutya ukuza ikwalisa uvimba wayo. Ngoko ke, zonge imbovane kufuneka zisebenze kakulu. Imbovane enginani, ikwalisa ngukukwaza ngenda uwe efunde ngayo. I restaurante hindo efuneka ayo, inda uapo abantu bachela kona. Zicho jalo ingwati endi zifunda ayo. Imbovane, za amba ngomkozo nganye nganye. Zisenza umkozo ekuchone ni ikwela anga. Yaze imbovane enginane yat, hey, nansi enye yazo. Imbovane, za amba ngomkozo nganye nganye, zitwele ipeka, zitwele ipanisi. Kazi buya, ikumgani kazi, ya vuya. Ovi mbaba kwele. Zivuya ngathi zibhambene imbovane encinane ifumana ukwangiwa ngumama notata udade wayo omncinci ubamba isandla sayo ngoku ndicinga ukuba ndiyaqonda indlela othanda ngayo ukufunda incwadi 
indenza ukuba ndirwaqule liphela njalo iba live rooster once upon a time they lived a cunning fox in a big forest the fox was very proud of his intelligence one day he was very hungry and wandering in search of food he was so hungry that he could not even walk suddenly he saw a rooster up on the roof of the house after seeing the rooster the fox started drooling and building castles in the air he thought of eating the rooster the fox made a plan to bring the rooster onto the ground and then it would eat him up the fox pretended to be the rooster's friend oh my friend rooster i'm seeing you after a very long time you seem to have lost some weight and have become very weak come down and let me count your paws and see what is wrong said the cunning fox you are my dear fox i'm feeling very exhausted and weak i can't even scamp down from the rooftop replied the clever rooster the fox realized that the rooster was too clever for him the rooster started laughing the fox was embarrassed and ran as fast as he could o um a super held to wees deur bobele retje die mou woon in 'n klein dorpie tussen berge groenvelde en pragtige woude maar sy gunsting plek is die park hy hou van die park want hy voel se se super held wanneer hy rond daar kloop op die klim raam klim en op die rondom tali draai Elke dag wanneer Timo na skool by die huis kom, trek hy sy skoolklere uit en eet die heerlike toebroekie wat sy ouma vir hom maak. Dan doen hy sy huiswerk en wanneer dit klaar is, hardloop hy buiten toe en roep: "Ouma, ouma, dis speeltyd." En ouma roep agterna: "Timo, wag. Wil jy nie ek moet vir jou storie lees nie?" "Nee, ouma, ek wil gaan speel en verken," antwoord Timo. Al klaar op pad na sy maats wat by die hek vir hom wag. Daar is baie plekke wat jy in die storyboek kan verken, Timo, sê ouma altyd. Boeke kan vir jou baie dinge leer en jou na plekke toevat waar jy nog nooit was nie. Timo giggel net en sê, ouma, boeke kan my nergens een vat nie. Net karre kan dit doen. En dan hart op hy in die straat af na die park toe om met sy maats te gaan speel. Een middag wacht Timo sy beste maat Ben vir hom by die hek. Hey, Timo, is jy reg om te gaan speel, vrou Ben? Ek's altyd reg, sê Timo, en jag reesies teen sy beste maat in die straat af. Hulle wil al by eerste by die park wees. Toe hulle daar kom, wacht Timo sy ander maats vir hulle. Pamela sit op die swaai en aaiel, terwyl Noma en Sia langs haar staan. Hulle lyk bekommerd. Timo sta nader om uit te vind wat aangaan. Wat het met Pamela gebeur, vrou hy? Sy was op die swaai en Sia het dit per ongeluk te hard gestoot. Pamela het van die swaai afgeval en nou bloei haar knie, verduidelik Noma. Ach nee, wat gaan ons nou doen, vrou Ben? Als reg, ek weet wat om te doen, sê Noma, terwyl sy haar rugsak nader trek en een klein sakkie uithaal. Wat's dit, vrou Timo? Dis een noodhulpsakkie. Ek gaan eers Pamela sy knie skoonmak en dan hier die pleister op plak so dat dit beter vol, sê Noma. Die maats is verbaas dat Noma precies weet wat om te doen. Toe die pleister opgeplak is, sê Pamela dat sy baie beter vol en weer wil speel. Al die maats is gelukkig en verlig en hulle sê vir Noma dankie. Alma hard klip na die klimraam toe, behalwe Timo. Hy wonder hoe Noma geweet het wat om te doen. Hy wil weet waar een mens hierdie soort dinge kan leer, want superhelde is veronderstel om te weet hoe mens het help. Timo stap na waar Noma bezig is om te klim en vraag, hoe het jy geweet wat om te doen? Sy glimlach en sê, 
ek het dit in een storyboek gelees. Jy het al daar die goed uit een storyboek geleer? Vraat die mou. Hy is nie seker wat hy kan glo, of hy kan glo wat noem hom vertel nie. Ja, die mou, ek wil een dokter wees wanneer ek groot is, so dat ek mense kan help. Wanneer ek storyboeken lees, leer ek hoe dokters mense help, sê Noma. Die mou is verstom. Ek wil een superheld wees en ook mense help. Denk jy storyboeken kan my leer om dit te doen? Vraag hy. Natuurlijk, sê Noma. Storyboeken kan een mens baie dinge leer. Neem net boeken by die bibliotheek uit en begin lees. Die volgende dag, toe hy na school by die huis kom, trek die mou sy schoolkleren uit en eet die heerlijke toebroekje wat sy ouma vir hom gemaakt het. Toe doen hy sy schoolwerk. Hy is net klaar toe ouma omroep, die mou jou maat is hier, hulle wacht vir jou om te gaan speel in die park. Sê asjeblief vir hulle, ek sal later kom ouma, antwoord die mou. Oh, ouma kan haar oor in die geloo nie, die mou is altyd haastig om by die park te gaan. Waarom Gaan jy nie nou dadelijk nie, vraag sy. Ek wil ga, ek graag hee, ouma moet vir my een story lees voor ek gaan, asjeblief, sê die mou. Oh, ouma glimlach bly, dis niet. Hoekom wil jy vandag hee, ek moet vir jou een story lees, vraag sy. Want noem as die stories kan my leer om een superhaal te wees en my maats te help, sê die mou, terwyl hy opgewonde op en afspring. Dis mos my kind, sê ouma, terwyl sy een storyboek opdaal. Ouma en die mou gaan sit toe saam en lees daar die storyboek. En nog een, en nog een, en elke middag daarna, voordat die mou in die park gaan speel, vraag hy vir ouma om vir hom te lees. Dis is soko sê Mali, sê ti, et da mi lo moja ne langa. Kose bo sika, e langa no moja, Baya piki sa. Ndina maanja kunawe. Ndinga vutuza. Kuwe imiti. Wacha umoya. Musa ukuzi kata. Mna ndinga balela. Ndikaze kuche ama lati. Lacho ilanga. Kamna ndikute. Unabe wena mlilo. Ndichabala lise. Kucha yonke indo. Wacho moya. Besa piki sana. Kwa vela indo da yomba te ijezi enkulu efudu meleyo. Masi yake ukaka. Masi bwana kalise amanda. Oye wakwazi ukwenza lando da isuse ijezi enkulu. Ipumelele. Wacho moya. Kulungi. Lacho ilanga, kuba, moya, kala. Wakala umoya obandayo wavutuza. Indo daya kakaze la ikotola, umoya uitzale la ekalini. Wakubekeka wacho umoya. Kunzi makuyo ukukubekeka pambili. Ya kobosha onke ama kosha ejezi indota. Wacho, wacho, wacho umoya. Ya be indota ipambelele ejezi ni ikatisile. Wawuti niwe umoya. Uvu tuze kwa neleyo. Kubalanga. Zibona kalisa wacho umoya. La kata la chonge mita efudu meleyo ilanga. Ya yeka ukukakazele indota. Imita ye langa isi choka mnandi emzimbini. La kubeke kalisia lima shushu ilanga. Ya nye nyisa ikina indota. Ya kulula anamakosa echezi. La kata ilanga ni mita isia ichisa kanobon. Ya ikulula echezi indota. Ya kubeka no ambu luayo ya ya kusitele. Ubu chilo langa. Andi buindi kaise. Inene unamanda anga pezu mkwa wam. Wacho umoya. Usimka upolili. Enkosi moya. Nam diya kushonipa. 
lacho ilanga lisiya kuchona phela apho ulayiza o mvulayiza yayi injika langa etshisayo yasehlotyeni uli latho waziphephezela ukuzipholisa ukuba nje inokuna imvula watsho umtakwabo umayamiko kwakutshisa kakhulu kuvumela abantwana ukuba badlale phandle chapa chapa wayiva kuqala uli latho yavakala ngathi lilike eliqakatha phezu kophahla lwendlu uli latho watsho nga umayamiko kodwa yena umayamiko akazange amjonge wachexwa waya efestileni waza watsho nga phezulu esibhakabhakeni isibhakabhaka sasingwevu bomnyama ngebala uli latho Waqalisa ukucula ingoma awayifundiswe ngumhlobo wakhe omkhulu umwansa Wemfula isa isa twangale nama isa Wemfula isa isa twangale nama isa Oh yizamvula ukuze sidlale emvuleni Oh yizamvula ukuze sidlale emvuleni Uli latho wacula Engqaza iminwe yakhe chapa 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 ana ngakumbi amaqabaza emvula maya kuyana wamemeza ulilato kuyana babaleka baphumela phandle umama wayesele ebeka i emere ejikeleza indlu ukuqokelela amanzi imvula babaleka ukuya emgaqweni ongaphandle kwendlu yakowabo baza bazibandakanya nabanye abantwana intsholo ethi wemfula insa insa twangale nama insa ya avakala jikelele ebumelwa nini isibhakabhaka savuleka sathulula imvula ngakumbi sizibandakanya nomculo wosuku phela phela ngabali amazing daisy written by noziziwe herero illustrated by sia masuka once upon a time on a little farm near a little village there lived a little chicken called daisy When I grow up, I want to fly high into the sky, Daisy said. But all the other chickens laughed at her. You are so weird, they said. We won't play with you any more. Daisy, we can all flap our wings, but it's very difficult for chickens to fly, Mama told her. Daisy wouldn't give up. Every day she practiced by herself, flapping her wings. Flap, flap, flap. She would flap her wings. but she couldn't get off the ground while she practiced she imagined herself flying high into the sky and looking at the chickens below she imagined herself flying past the sparrows and past the swallows wow the birds would say a chicken that can fly so flap 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 every day daisy would flap her wings she would lift off the ground but fall down again I'm never going to fly, Daisy cried to Mama. The others are right. Daisy, you are different from the other chickens. They don't want to fly, but you do. You can do it, Mama said. The following day, Daisy climbed to the top of the chicken coop and flap flap flap. She flapped her wings. She flew into the air and flapped her wings and flapped her wings and flapped her wings and, her wings and bam. The other chickens laughed out loud. Ha ha ha, we told you, chickens can't fly. But the next day, Daisy climbed even higher, right up to the top of the rondavel. Flap flap flap. Daisy flapped her wings. She flew into the air and flapped her wings and flapped her wings and flapped her wings and she kept flying. The wind beneath her wings grew stronger and stronger and she flew higher and higher. The sparrows and the swallows said, "Amazing, a flying chicken." And the other chickens wanted to be just like her. They said, "Oh, Daisy, you were amazing." 
Ingaba ukonana mtu ofana na mwa. Ingaba ukonana mtu ofana na mwa. Kazi ukonana omnye mtu wondi mwa. Kwenye indawo apa ethabatim. Ofana mwa na mgengangeleko. Noteta njinga mlugani. Mtha umbite abe nenwele ezifana na mnezizam. Umtu onamesho kunye nendebe ezifana nezam mwa. Ote atheke njengam loganye. Okwazi yo kwenza izindo endi zenza ayo. Nunga kwazi yo kwenza izindo endi nga kwazi yo nam ukuzenza. Ndipuke ndi kangela omye umtu ondim kuyo yonge indao. Ndiye epakini ndachonga nga apaya kwe miti. Ndi chikeleze, nda chikeleza, ndi kangela, ndi senyuka, ndi setha. Ndi chonga obu senga buunye, ndi thanga nanabo. Andi kwa zanga kufumana, no mnyu umdu undim, kuyo naipina enye indao. Ndi mkupela ondim ethabatini, ndi ketekile, o oh, ngenene, oko kuinyaniso, kodwa, ayindi ni, Nje kupela, wena au zibon, nawe unguwe, wedwa, waba, jui. Pela pela, ngaba. In a land not so far away, and not that long ago, Shushle Saki lived with his beautiful wife, Numushle, and they had three children. The eldest child was a girl, Nundumbi. The middle child was a boy, Sipo. And everybody called the youngest child Nomadze, although her real name was Nomshe. For, in, for indeed, she was very, very beautiful. People said she was the spitting image of her mother when she was a girl. Nomadze was born two months before time. She was a premature baby and very, very tiny. This is how she got the nickname Nomadze. Nomadze, a small but full spirit. What Nomadze lacked in size, she made up for in keenness of wit. She was as bright as a new queen. Shoshle Saike and his family lived happily until a terrible drought came to the land. People went hungry and starved until they got so thin you could count the ribs of a grown man through his clothes. Things were so bad, people dug up roots for food. When they couldn't find any more roots, they ate grass and the leaves of trees. And when there was no more grass and the trees were all bare, they stripped the trees and cooked the hard, dry, bitter strips of bark. For long months, the summer rains did, just did not come. The land was dry and hard as still. Anyone who was silly enough to plow just heard the plug sing as it struck the rock hard soil. People prayed for rain, but the rains did not come. Nweni, bashoboba, ika malamu gulinde elwa, nita kose. Na mshanje kende za kufunifune la nwati, ee palu yungu misha li kumayo. Sika kose li nwati siti, ulu nwabo. Hmm, masifunde nike. Uluwano wabo wae yungwe nkwana ene minyaka ilishu. Wae sala no mama no makulu waki kwi kaya labo na kutoboko. Makulu waki wae nestia semifuno eza si tumega kuhu. Wae ngwiti za umakulu waki ngo kwenye ngwesha le mifuno a sale istie. Indo ea imusupa ya iku kututa amanzo kwenye ngwesha le mlanji. Wae ngo nini koko wae sucho anga basho bubaki. Awe beso loko be mseka. Kae si sa ikina esi ya imlanji. Ngelika basho bubaki beza lipola. Yena wae si sa inyuka ilkina iyo kuka amans. Onwabili. Babe mseka be mkwaza be siti. Kupsebe sa wato wazana lawo. Sase sese lo ndo china. Wae nga ba nanzi. Wae baseka aniki ni ntoko. Akube genu ambulu waki. Wai solo ketunga ngenzela. Weza zivanga hayo kaa epakati kusitia esu saa kenu mkulu waki. 
waibano lo nwabo olumenza aliba lo tunga batlobu baki. Waino kiselu alivu mbeli mnandi lo mlaba ovu ndileyo. Abukele na makabi espinaj. Kaa inga makepe kepi. Isi lo awayeso nwabela kakulu ya isi sasi mini. Sasi pekwa nguma kulu wake gelika yenese skolweni. Umama wake ipangeli. Waye fika ukuja kwa ike kupezi kwa itafili. Akukweba ukululi mbasha ze skolu wa ilela panzi enzu mtanda zwa no mngini. Akukweba aki. Umakulu waye peka inrobo nrobo ze zilo. Nja nja isopu umkaka umka nezi nye zilo. Anga zange wambonu mama wake zipeka kusilo sabo sa nguguru. Waye zonu wabe lulu nabo izilo zake ze ati ba kiba atlambi zicha zake atati stulo ipepa kwenye ne pencil atale zale nga makulu waki. Nabo waye zonu wabe lulu nabo izilo zake ze ati ba kiba atlambi zicha zake atati stulo ipepa kwenye ne pencil atale zale nga makulu waki. Nabo waye zonu wabe lulu nabo izilo zake ze ati ba kiba atlambi zicha zake atati stulo ipepa kwenye ne pencil atale zale nga makulu waki. Nabo waye zonu wabe lulu nabo izilo zake ze ati ba kiba atlambi zicha zake atati stulo ipepa kwenye ne pencil atale zale nga makulu waki. Nabo waye zonu wabe lulu nabo izilo zake ailo no uza kuitwe irest leyo ngeka malka makulu wake aze apheke zonke izinto makulu wake awayempekela zonke igama ke lele rest yo wayeza kuyibiza ngokuba sebhongweni phela phela shaka and mazi shaka has a new friend that only he can see his name is mazi he tells mama but whenever mama comes into shaka's room mazi runs and hides Mazi likes to laugh. He makes Shaka laugh too. They roll in the grass and build sand castles in the sand. Can Mazi eat with us? Shaka asks Papa at dinner. But when Papa looks up, Mazi hides behind the curtains. One day, Mama tells Shaka, Papa has a new job. We are moving to another town. Can Mazi come? Shaka asks Mama. Ask him, Mama says, but Shaka can't see Mazi anywhere. The next afternoon, the big truck comes. Soon the house is empty, but Shaka can't leave. Where has Mazi gone? Is Mazi in the garden? Has he jumped over the fence? Maybe Mazi's papa got a new job too, Mama says. He might also have moved away. When Shaka gets to the new house, there is a boy next door. My name is Matty, says the boy with a smile. Sometimes we miss old friends, Mama says. But there is always room in our hearts for new ones too. Upi utabo. Upi utabo. Kuse kuse ni ngomvulu. Yaya usapolu katabo lulungiselela usuku. Umama unamili, utita iti yake eka undarini, kutwa upi utabo, toba isanja, mama. Utata unamili, imba thazake zonke azilunganga, kutwa upi utabo, toba isanja, tata. Uzinzi unamili. Upanga isi tutusake. Ukona umdoke wabona utabo. Toba isanja. Zinzi. Tabo. Upi utabo. Utabo akangamanga. Kaula zisa tabo. Uza kufika emfa kwa kaya shesi kolweni. Yae kumbula. Luka kosho olwe pola ekajwa yona mthanje. Utabo unamile. Kaula zisani nonge. Luka kosho olwe pola ekajwa yona mthanje. Pela pela nga bali. Okay, I'm reading my second story for the afternoon. I am going to read my English story now, which is Dr. Zeus's ABC. I'm a Dr. Zeus fanatic, so if you've seen me reading before, um, you'll more than likely see me reading Dr. Zeus before, so let me read this one. I love his stories. Let's go. Dr. Zeus's ABC. Big A, little A. What begins with A? 
Aunt Alligator's Aunt Annie's Alligator, A-A-A. Big B, little B, what begins with B? Barber Baby Bubbles and the Bumblebee. Big C, little C, what begins with C? Camel on the ceiling, C, C, C. Big D, little D, David Donald do, dreamed a dozen donuts and a duck a dog too. A, B, C, D, E, ear, egg, elephant, E, E, E. Big F, little F, 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 oh, fluffy feathers on a FIFA feather, Fev. Do you guys want to come in? Come sit. Do you want to come in? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, goat, girl, goo, goo, goggles, g, 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 g. Big H, little H, hungry horse, hey, hen in a hat, hooray, hooray. Big I, little I, 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 Ichabod is itchy, so am I. Big J, little J, what begins with J? Jerry Jordan's jelly jar and jam begin that way. Big K, little K, little kangaroo, kick a kettle kite and a king's kerchoo. Big L, little L, little Lola Lop, left leg lazy lion licks a lollipop. Big M, little bear, many mumbling mice are making midnight music in the moonlight. Mighty mice. Big N, little N, what begins with those? Nine new neckties and a, nurch, a night shirt and a nose. O is very useful. You use it when you say, ask us only ostrich, oil and orange owl today. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, J, L, M, N, O, P. Painting pink pajamas, policeman in a pail, Peter Pepper's puppy, and now there's Papa in the pail. Big Q, little Q, what begins with Q? The quick queen of Quincy and her quack and quackaroo. Big R, little R, Rosie, Robin, Russ. Rosie's got a riding on her red rhinoceros. Big S, little S, silly Sammy Slick. Sip six sodas and got sick, sick, sick. T, 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 what begins with T? Ten tired turtles on a turtle tattle tree. Big U, little U, what begins with U? Uncle Oob's umbrella and his underwear too. Big V, little V, Vera Violet Vin is very, very, very awful on her violin. W, 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 Willow Waterloo, washes Warren Wiggins who is washing Walder Woo. X is very useful if your name is Nikki Knox. It also comes in handy spelling X and extra fox. Big Y, little Y, a yawning yellow yak. Young Yolanda Jorgensen is yelling on his back. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Big Z, little Z, what begins with Z? I do. I'm a zzzzzzzz, as you can plainly see.